How's it going guys? We are back at it again with a brand spanking new Season 12 guide. Hopefully fueled with enough information to give you the fighting edge going straight into solo queue. So sit back, relax and enjoy the educational commentary. So this guide's gonna be broken down into a few different parts. We're gonna be starting off with picks and bands, moving on to builds and runes, and then maybe some additional information if needed. But primarily, those are the main things you need to focus on going into season 12. You wanna know what lane you're playing, and who you're playing against, or who you shouldn't play against, and how to build in that lane. So, without further ado, let's get into the picks and bands. Putting that kind of power into everyone's hands is dangerous. So let's start off with the top lane bands and slowly work our way down the bot lane. So whenever I'm playing Heimerdinger top lane, I actually usually ban a jungler or a top lane, which I kind of just don't like playing against. There's no real top laners right now, which I would say hard counter Heimerdinger. Whenever you're playing Heimer, remember your top lane gameplay and play style and your win condition is significantly different from that of whenever you're playing mid lane or bot lane or support, or even jungle, obviously. So whenever I'm playing top lane, again, I'm always going to get outscaled by the enemy top lane. They're going to build MR, they're going to be a bruiser, they're going to be a tank in late game. I'm probably not going to be able to do that much against them. No matter how much uh, penetration I buy or whatever build path I go, the win condition that I have top lane and the place that I have top lane is usually based on getting plating or helping with maybe Herald or Roman mid lane or maybe TP and bot for a potential kill or help with with a dragon whenever i'm playing top it's always going to be based around those kind of win cons and, and that playstyle. so with that in mind i usually maybe ban hecarim in the jungle hecarim right now is just devastating uh, i don't know if anybody else is having the same issues that i have but if i play with a hecarim i win if i play against hecarim i lose and if i'm playing top lane there's a very strong chance that i'm going to get hard count by hecarim and there's maybe nothing i can do about it so Hecarim is a strong ban if I'm top lane because of his impact in the jungle. I also don't like playing against Nunu or Zac when I'm top lane. I'm more inclined to ban Nunu than Zac just due to the pure pick rate right now. And in relation to an actual top laner, I don't like playing against Garen. Uh, I'll usually beat Garen in trades early, but there's a strong chance that when he gets level 6, he's going to be playing Ghost. He can just run me down and just slap me silly. Honorable mentions as well is uh, Aurelia and also Yon. Uh, those two champions, tremendously uh, skill in the late game. Very, very strong 1v2 potential, even if I get ganks from my own jungler, and uh, really big power spikes with their itemization. Definitely bigger power spikes than I get, so I'll maybe get a Leandres, and whenever they build their mythic, it's gonna be way bigger than me with my Leandres, because maybe they'll have resolve runes, and the, the lane phase in the game just will not be that fun to play against, really, but as always, open the comments, open the suggestions, let me know who you hate playing against in the top lane, uh, because I'm sure there's probably a Renek and One Trick Pony, or a Riven, or a Yaz, that has definitely clapped you at some point and given you PTSD or Nightmares, which has forced you to ban them every game forever, regardless of patch or season. And now we move on to the mid lane bans. So mid lane this season, in my opinion, is very rough to play, unless you're an assassin. Last season, season 11 was an assassin meta in the mid lane and essentially nothing much has really changed. Obviously we do have things like crying and stuff to help us stay a little bit more alive uh, whenever we're playing against an assassin, but realistically it's still a rough freaking season if you are a control mage of any kind, especially if you are Heimerdinger. And realistically my top two bands right now in the mid lane are Corky and Akshan. Corky is absurd right now in terms of his damage. No doubt though this will get patched in maybe a few weeks or a month. So that will change. Akshan as well. Akshan is unbelievably overpowered. Just because it's Akshan. It's just like the whole meme of 200 years. Akshan can do a lot of damage level 1. Uh, he can roam really really fast. And uh, realistically he scales in the late game tremendously well. As well as that he brings the entire team back to life with one big mistake so, okay so Akshan and Corky two big big bans for me personally in regards to playing against him in the mid lane especially as Heimer also another kind of meta ban would be Victor Victor with first strike and Victor with crying right now again is not that hard to play against early but all these champions seem to scale exceptionally well past 20 minutes 
a Matu never Heimerdinger has to kind of make or break. If you have a, if you have a Rabadans or maybe a Void, you can maybe have a good amount of damage to counter their output and have a little bit more viability and versatility in team fights. But they don't really have to do that much. They just have to focus on building right and playing safe. So, Corky, Action, Victor. And now we make our way down to the bot lane. And Heimer can be played as support and Heimer can be played as ADC or APC. And with each role comes a multitude of bands. So whenever we're playing ADC or APC, my number one ban is Kaelin. And the reason being is Kaelin's range. Kaelin has absolutely absurd range, especially compared to that of Heimerdinger. She can auto attack my turrets from very far away and there's nothing I can do about it. Of course, I can punish her maybe uh, after level six, seven, eight, once I get maybe a little bit of itemization and once I get my ultimate. But until then, the lane phase is gonna be very, very hard. And Balian is usually won or lost pre-6. Usually a, a level two spike of some kind, a level two all in, and Kaelin completely negates any kind of all in that you can do at level two. So she's my number one ban if I'm playing Heimer APC. My number two ban, if Kaelin is potentially already banned, is Leona. Leona is an absolute force to be reckoned with no matter what point of the game it is, or no matter what champion you are playing. Leona is just an absolute CC machine. And Heimerdinger's biggest problem is potentially, if you get CC'd, you're dead. You're pretty much dead. So usually if you miss a grenade, you die as Heimer because you have no escape, you have no dash, you have no disengage. And Leona can lock you down for an unbelievable amount of time. You might flash your ultimate and then she'll Zenith Blade you and then stun you for another two or three seconds. Very, very hard to deal with early and even harder to deal with late game. So Leona is a big ban if Caitlyn is already taken out of the mix. If I'm playing Heimerdinger support, I actually love playing against melee oriented supports and I really, really enjoy playing against AP oriented uh, artillery mages or control mages as supports like a Lux or a Brand or a Zyra. The reason being is that I can usually burst them down before they burst me down, unless you potentially range me in some facet, but I really, really hate playing against Yumi or Lulu. The reason being is whenever I'm playing a Heimerdinger support, the point of me playing him support is to get a bit of momentum in the lane early, get power spikes or get a, a level advantage, have a lot of alcove control with my turrets, but primarily to be able to burst down the enemy ADC or support as fast as possible with help from my ADC. Also, whenever you ban Yumi or Lulu, you kind of inadvertently ban out Cog or Twitch because both of those champions are usually very reliant on either of those supports. So it's kind of like a sneaky double ban if you ban one of those supports. I usually prefer to ban Lulu over a Yumi because again, Yumi late game can carry a lot of games, but if you have a lot of CC early and you can lock down a kill on the enemy ADC early, it's usually a two for one offer whenever you kill him. You kill Cog and you get the Yimmy for free. And that is us done for bans. Again, comment below and let me know if there's any champion which you specifically despise playing against and you just ban them every single game. Because everybody plays in different elos with different play styles, so you probably have that one champion in mind which you just want gone forever. So now we move on to our rune pages. So I have different rune setups for top lane, mid lane, APC and support. So we're gonna go through why I use certain runes, what you could potentially change with them and potentially different matchups in which certain runes are better than others for each specific lane. So let's get into the runes. So we're gonna start off with top lane runes first and slowly make our way down to mid lane and then bot lane, just like we did with the bands. So whenever I'm playing top lane, there's a few different ways in which you can approach it. Realistically, Comet and TP is the most safe way to play. So you go Comet, TP, you try and poke from afar. Don't get within melee range because you're gonna be playing against a bruiser of some kind who can probably trade with you a lot better melee uh, than potentially you can trade with them. It's a bit obvious. Also, if you're playing against a tank, they're going to be building a lot of MR. So you want to try and just, again, poke them down, auto attack if they do get within range, and slowly but surely uh, push in as fast as possible. Whenever I'm playing top lane, I like to try and get uh, platens as soon as possible before they can potentially bully me by building some kind of MR, uh, or maybe even getting an early Merc Treads. That's usually whenever the lane starts getting a little bit dicey, when they get Merc Treads or any kind of MR to stop me putting the pressure on them. Uh, 
Level 1, you're going to be doing okay. And uh, Comet allows you to just play quite safely. Just like you would if you're playing mid lane. The only thing is, whenever you're playing top lane, there is uh, a very strong chance of getting ganked. Uh, especially if you overextend. So you want to try and get a ward in their tribush, tri and you want to try and make sure that River is warded as well. So just, again, play safe, play smart, and play for CS and play for plate and top lane. That's my approach if I'm playing Comet. Uh, you're going to be playing just for objectives more than kills because of the nature of the limb. So I go Comet, I go Mana Flow to help with sustain with potentially clearing waves with my W. Uh, absolute focus while above 70% health, gain extra adaptive damage. You can go absolute focus, or maybe you can go transcendence, depending on what we want to play. I just like absolute focus for the extra damage. And gathering the storm. Gathering the storm makes way more sense than going scorch. This is in, in my opinion. I like scorch on a mid lane because the obviously the base health pull of a mid laner is very very uh, low in comparison to that of a top laner. It's it's simple, especially with their build path and so on as well. So. Uh, Guys in the Storm, Comet, Mana Flow, and Absolute Focus for the left-hand side. And then we go Domination Secondary. Again, you can do whatever you want. You can potentially go Inspiration, get some Biscuits, and so on. But I feel like Mana Flow with Adorans. And then once you get a chapter, it's more than enough mana to help you in the early the, the early game and maybe, maybe even the mid-game. But Domination for me is really, really good. Uh, because I've, I've always just been a Domination fanboy, to be honest. Uh, Taste of Blood. Or cheap shot, depending on how you want to play the lane. Cheap shot obviously is damage and trying to get a kill. Uh, I feel like Taste of Blood in relation to how the top lane is played makes more sense because you want to have a little bit more sustain. They're going to out-sustain you because they are a tank and probably have resolve and they have just a lot more in their kit, which is going to allow them to trade quite efficiently into you. So Taste of Blood for me is a really, really good choice. Uh, you can also potentially go Eyeball Collection if you want or Sudden Impact. I do like Taste of Blood. I do like Taste of Blood. And then Ravenous Hunter is something which I have loved since it was implemented into League of Legends. And I fell out of love with it and went back to Ingenious Hunter because Ravenous Hunter has been constantly, constantly nerfed every single season, every single patch. Because in theory, it's very, very strong. It offers Omnivamp, Omnivamp on, you know, champions who potentially have pets. You know, like Zyra, like Heimerdinger. It's very, very strong, if not balanced correctly. So Omnivamp is nowhere near as good as it used to be. Ravenous Hunter is nowhere near as good as it used to be. But... When I play with Ingenious Hunter, I do see a significant uh, decrease in win rate. Maybe it's because I'm so used to, you know, getting a lot of AP and then having Taste of Blood and Omni and having the Ravenous Hunter Omni Vamp allow me to essentially just heal from minion waves. And uh, a lot of the times I'll be ignited or I'll be very, very low and just that little bit of Omni Vamp on a... Uh, on a turret auto attack or a turret beam or maybe like a, a fade away missile will give me enough health to uh, to survive and and that's essentially it like you can go ravenous hunter you can go ingenious hunter whatever is better for your playstyle. like remember league of legends is not a linear game everybody plays differently even me to like another heimerdinger player or or whoever else you watch my playstyle, my understanding is significantly different from anybody else's and so is yours okay so use everybody's room pages as a bit of a template and then see what works for you to see what works for you so ingenious or ravenous and then down here adaptive force adaptive force and then armor simple as that so that's my first iteration of a top lane rune page and we'll go on to the second iteration now and this is the second iteration of my top lane rune page so very very different obviously from what you just seen this is precision primary with sorcery secondary no domination here at all so we're looking at Conquer as our main run. The reason being is honestly, Conquer is way better than potentially a lot of people give it credit for. Whenever I'm playing top lane, I'm forcing a lot of 1v2 uh, scenarios early, especially because I'll play Conquer with Barrier or Conquer with Ignite. The whole point is the the lane is played significantly differently from the way you would play it if you were playing a Comet playstyle. Comet's about farming, trying to get objectives poking from afar where conquerors are more kind of in your face you know you can proc conquer very very fast due to your turrets being able to proc it with their autos you can proc it with your own auto and if as long as you keep staying in combat and keeping the pressure on conquer can be very very strong the whole way through the game okay but remember it's all about proccing it with your turrets and the reason it's strong in 1v2 scenarios is because obviously there's more people for your turrets to potentially attack so if you're getting ganked by a Lee Sin and you're playing against maybe a Camille top lane, maybe level three, level four, you can you can get a double kill because of the the huge power spike which Conqueror will give you in that one fight. Not to mention obviously the survivability. 
comboed that with a barrier. So I have honestly loved and conquer even the mid lane recently, uh, whenever I'm playing against melee orientated champions. I'm an, elect I'm an Electrocute fanboy forever. I love Electrocute. You'll have seen so many videos where I play Electrocute, one of the more aggressive Heimerdinger players out there. But I just am really vibing with Conquer this season. And essentially, it's not even because of Conquer. It's because I'm actually really enjoying Barrier. I love Barrier. I love Barrier and I love Ignite. And I feel like the TP changes have really forced me to stop taking TP as much as I used to on Heimerdinger. I feel like when I'm playing top lane, you need to play TP to have a lot of impact on other points of the map. But what I'm starting to see as games are going on and as the season's already progressing, there's a lot of Ignite top laners. And hey, why not become a barrier top laner? I'm a conqueror. Combos that so freaking well. So then we go down to Presence of Mind. Presence of Mind is fantastic for their early regeneration. Uh, in fact, it's just great for regeneration the whole way through the laning phase. So Presence of Mind is fantastic. Uh, Tenacity Legend. You can go Tenacity Legend or you can go Attack Speed if you want um, to get those auto attacks down to try and get Conqueror procs. But Tenacity makes the most sense. You know, less EC the better, especially on Heimerdinger. Last Stand as well. You can potentially go Last Stand or you can maybe go uh, Coup de Gras. It's, it's up to you, but I feel like Last Stand's good. Deal more damage to champions while you're low health. Again, this is very, very strong in the 1v2 scenarios I was talking about. Whenever you're playing Conqueror, you're getting ganked. Last Stand's proccing. You have the Conqueror damage. You have uh, maybe the Gathering the Storm is popping off. Uh, you maybe have a little bit of a power spike rocking. Last Stand comes into play and allows you to get that extra damage in which you need to lock down. Maybe the second kill in a gank. So then we move on to the right side. You can play this a little bit differently. You can maybe go Domination and play with Ravenous Hunter and play with Taste of Blood. You know, have that extra regen, which potentially you would need. But I do like Mana Flow. I do like Garden the Storm because uh, it allows you to be quite frivolous with your mana early. Having Mana Flow, having Presence of Mind, having Dorn's Ring, having uh, a chapter allows you to never ever have to really worry about oh, I only have like 100 mana, I only have like 50 mana left, where in the mid lane, potentially things like that do happen due to the nature of the lane. Uh, so mana flow, presence of mind, uh, combo together, I feel actually work really, really well. And then Garth and the Storm is a very, very safe uh, play style going into the, the mid to late game. I never used to really like Garth and, Garth and the Storm that much. I've always been a Scorch fanboy. And realistically, mid lane, I do play Scorch over Garth, Gathering the Storm. But I feel like Gathering the Storm pays off dividends once you do get a Rabadans. If you have Gathering the Storm and it's 30 minutes in and then you have a Rabadans, mathematically, it's just such a strong rune. So again, use this as a little bit of a template. Play Conquer, play Comet. Hey, play Electrocute if you really want to. Your runes should always change in relation to who you're playing against, okay? So it's not the same rune page every single game. Think properly whenever you do approach a lane. What summoners are correct? What runes are correct? Don't just blindly go, oh, this is my top lane page. This is my mid lane page, okay? Sometimes Conquer will be good, and sometimes Comet will be good. And then this is my mid lane rune setup. So we're going to have two different iterations of our rune page, just like we did top lane. We're going to have a very aggressive setup and then more of a passive setup. But this is usually my go-to rune page in the majority of my games, maybe like 70% of my games. I feel like Heimerdinger does not work well when he falls behind. So what's the best way to not fall behind is to get ahead. And how do you get ahead? You get early kills. You try and be the aggressor. You want to strike first, okay? So Electrocute for me is a really, really, really strong rune specifically because of the ease of being able to proc it. You can proc Electrocute very, very easily with a third auto attack, your, your auto attack, maybe a missile or a beam, a grenade, an auto attack, or ignite third auto attack, your auto attack. A lot of the times I've gotten some spicy, spicy kills on people who just have not expected me to do so much damage in such a short period of time, purely because of the ease of me being able to proc Electrocute. And essentially, that is one of the main reasons why I take Electrocute. And again, this setup, this rim page, is going to be taken against a lot of melee oriented champions that are going to be mid lane. So that's going to be probably assassins. And realistically, the whole point you take it is to kill them before they kill you. Assassin meta has been a really big thing over the last couple of years. You went into season 12. It's no real difference. If you're an artillery mage, you're probably being played as a support. You're seeing the Belkazes, you're seeing the Zeraths, you're seeing the Heimerdingers. You've seen all these guys who are all about AP long range attacks being shoved to the support role because they just can't stand up against the assassins or a lot of the the current AD-orientated mid lane meta. So, 
Electrocute for me is really, really strong. I take Electrocute with Ignite because it's an aggressive rune setup. We then move down to Taste of Blood. Taste of Blood gives me that extra sustain, especially in early trades if I'm trying to play super aggressive. And then we move down to Eyeball Collection. Eyeball Collection, again, you just get rewarded for playing aggressive. You get extra AP. Uh, you can potentially go Zombie Ward if you really want to or Ghost Poro, but I feel like this fits the playstyle a lot better. And then Ravenous Hunter, just like I said when I was talking about when I take it top lane. Uh, Ravenous Hunter or Ingenious Hunter. Ingenious Hunter is actually really, really, really strong. Uh, it probably is a better rune than Ravenous, but it's just personal preference. I still just love Ravenous. You may look at it and go, oh, at the end of the game, you only healed for this amount with Ravenous Hunter. But it's the points in which you heal, okay? So it's not always the, the amount in which you heal. It's the point of the game in which you heal. You know, it doesn't matter if I only heal for 100 or 300 or, or 1,000. Did that portion of health which I healed for make me survive and potentially stop the enemy getting a kill or getting extra gold? If so, then it's probably a better pick. But it's all about what you prefer in certain matchups and certain lanes. Choose wisely. So we move on to the right-hand side. I'm going to go Sorcery, but we actually don't take Mana Flow. You can take Mana Flow, but remember, whenever I'm playing Electrocute, it's usually about one burst combo, okay? It's not constantly poking them down like I would with Comet. I'm going to be throwing missiles out or grenades, trying to get trying to get Comet procs, trying to slowly whittle them down. This is about the all-in, okay? So the mana usage is a lot harder to maintain, but you shouldn't be using as much mana because of the playstyle. Okay, you're not conscious frivolously throw one out skill shots hoping they land. It's all about concise grenades uh, with ignite electrocute missile combos. So, Scorch for me is great because again, all this damage in one combo adds up. You can swap by Taste of Blood for Cheap Shot if you want to go super ballsy. But I feel like Taste of Blood is that little bit of safe space which you need in the lane. So, Scorch, extra damage again. Scorch with Gathering the Storm. Or you could potentially swap Scorch out for Gathering the Storm. Like I was saying earlier, Gathering the Storm late game is fantastic. You get a crazy amount of AP. Couple that with uh, Rabadans, and it's great. But the damage in which I do with Scorch at certain points of the game, I feel, is weighted harder than potentially the extra AP I get mid to late. If Scorch helps me get first blood or helps me get an early kill, is that really better than, or is that really worse than having maybe 10? or 8 AP at 10 minutes in, but then maybe not get a kill? It's up to you. It's completely up to you. Some games I'm going, oh, I wish you'd taken Gathering the Storm. It's 55 minutes in. Oh, I can imagine how much AP I would have. It would be insane. And in other games, they're over in 20 minutes, and I'm like, well, I potentially could have killed that person at level 4 or 5 if I had Scorch instead of Gathering the Storm. But it's all up to you. That's the beauty of League of Legends. Everything is not linear. You can choose what you want when you want, but be wise in your approach. Do not be taking Electrocute into Xerath or into a, a just a long range mage in some some scenario because you're not going to be able to proc it. Okay, but if you're playing against maybe a Lee Sin in the jungle and a Zed mid or maybe uh, an Echo mid with a a, a Kha'Zix jungle. Strong chance you're probably going to get a 1v2 or you're going to maybe win a 1v2 and get a spicy kill early because of the playstyle of Electrocute and Ignite. Then offense is just going to be Adaptive Force. Flex is going to be Adaptive Force. And then defense is obviously changed in relation if you're playing against an AD champion or uh, an AP champion. And then this would be my safer setup. This would be my safer mid lane Rimpage. This is the way I would potentially play if I'm playing against maybe another AP oriented mid laner which has long range skill shots like a Lux, like a Xerath, like a, like a Victor, something like that. I'm going to whittle them down, not get too close, try and win the trade wars and just throw out missiles, max W and get as much damage done as I can. And it's as simple as that. So Arcane Comet, Mana Flow obviously for the, the skill shots in the early trades. I still like Absolute Focus. You can potentially go Transcendence if you want to have that extra CDR. It's completely up to you. Gathering the Storm, again, you could take Scorch because of the way the, the lane's played. You're going to be slowly whittling them down, throwing out skill shots. But usually Gathering the Storm is probably a better shout in relation to this playstyle. And then moving on to the right hand side, Taste of Blood, Ravenous Hunter, as we do. I love Taste of Blood, love Ravenous Hunter, especially Taste of Blood. Taste of Blood is fantastic, very, very easy to proc, very uh, um, impactful in the early game. Ravenous Hunter, maybe potentially Ingenious Hunter would make more sense in this matchup because, you know, Ravenous Hunter is great whenever you're doing a high burst because you're going to heal a lot from that huge amount of damage 
in a short period of time, where Ingenious might make more sense due to the nature of the build path that you're going to go and potentially the way the lane's played. And then we go down to Adaptive Force, Adaptive Force, just like we did previously, switch it out if you're going against an AD, or if you're going against an AP, you go Magic Resist, simple as that. When I'm playing Comet though, I'm usually inclined to play either TP mid lane, or I'm more inclined to play Barrier mid lane, because I don't really need Ignite, because it's going to be very, very hard to drop an Ignite on somebody's head, unless it's a jungler. If I'm playing against a Xerath or a Lux, I'm not going to probably be with a melee range. Maybe when I get level 6 and I can kind of run them down and put an alt turret beside their head, I get that, but realistically, Barrier makes a lot more sense. And now we move on to our bot lane, Rune Page. And you'll probably notice that when I'm playing Heimerdinger APC, when I'm playing Heimerdinger AP Carry, that I use the exact same runes as I use when I'm playing mid lane. Not Electricate, but Comet. This is the exact same Comet Rune Page in which I just explained whenever we were going through the, the mid lane Rune Page. So I don't really need to go over it that in depth. It's the exact same Rune Page. The reason being is that you're going to be playing against a very long range lane, probably uh, a Kaelin, a Jinx, an MF, a Kaiser, pretty much anybody who can completely outrange you. And essentially, the ease of proc and Comet is pretty good because of the fact you're playing against two people bot lane. So you can flay out your missiles and proc it against maybe a Leona and an MF, depending on who it hits first. It's very, very easy to proc Comet, where again, it's very, very hard to proc Electricate because of the range. It's as simple as that. So this is the same rune setup. If you have any kind of questions, about this, comment below. I will try and answer as many questions as possible, but this is potentially the safest way to play bot lane without really throwing away any lead or putting yourself in any danger, which you don't really have to. So now let's talk about support. Whenever I'm playing support, I'm still trying to find my feet of what works. Sometimes Dark Harvest is insane like late game dark harvest is nuts if you guys haven't seen it i've uploaded so many dark harvest gameplays uh, where i play hammer support it's insane like late game i am just one tapping people if i go ludens and maybe a, a rabbitance it's crazy but with first strike being a new rune i feel like with hammer support and with a certain lane or a certain adc you can do absolute bit spot lane you can do absolute devastating damage at different points of the game specifically because first strike a gives you extra gold which works really really well with a spell thief so you're going to be getting a lot more gold than potentially you would otherwise so therefore more gold more aggression more power spikes simple as that but remember first strike is very very dependent on how much damage you do in one burst so if you're just kind of flaying out your rockets from afar trying to just poke people down then it's not going to be that great but if you're playing very, very aggressive around Alicos, trying to just pressure the uh, the bushes ball in and trying to just get huge combos early, First Strike's great. First Strike's fantastic, especially if you're playing it with maybe an ADC like Jin or an ADC like MF. Somebody has like a slow or a snare or a stun to allow you to combo it with your uh, your own stun. Even a Kaelin works really, really well as well. So First Strike... Moving down the, the perfect timing, having that free stopwatch is fantastic, especially if you're getting maybe Gankwai Law or Dove. Uh, having that perfect timing can add a little bit of spice to the mix and have a, a nice turnaround. Biscuit delivery, whenever I'm playing Inspiration, free biscuits, free mana is always fantastic, uh, especially if you're maybe you're if especially if you're maybe not going uh, mana flow in the secondary tree. So biscuit delivery is great, and obviously it just appears in infantry. You don't have to buy them. And uh, again, it can turn the tides of a lot of lanes. Having the extra sustain early can uh, allow you to get objectives or potentially uh, deny waves of the enemy uh, ADC. Uh, Cosmic Insight would be the next thing I would go if I'm playing a first strike inspiration tree. Cosmic Insight is great. You get summoner spell haste and you get item haste. It works really, really well with just generally being a support. And then secondary tree, of course, we got Ravenous Hunter, we got Taste of Blood. But to be honest, uh, in this matchup, I would probably change, or in this lane, I would probably change Ravenous to Ingenious because it makes more sense due to just the items in which you buy while being a support. And then to Adaptive, Adaptive Armor, probably because you're not going to be playing against an APC. But if you are playing against an APC, then we swap this out to Magic Resistance. So try First Strike. Let me know what you think. Again, I have some videos on First Strike uh, where it is absolutely insane. But 
Just like whenever you play Heimer APC, where you're dependent on a support, when you're playing a support, you're completely dependent on your ADC. So sometimes the stars don't align and it just doesn't work just with the nature of the, the ADC in which you're supporting. But remember, like I said earlier, League of Legends is not linear. Your thought process, your build, your runes should always change every single game. And then this would be my Dark Harvest setup, very, very uh, similar to a lot of my Electricate rune page. In fact, all I did was swap out uh, Electricate for Dark Harvest and Ravenous Hunter for Ingenious Hunter. So Dark Harvest, again, you get rewarded for playing aggressive, trying to get people down as low as possible. And if you play uh, very high up or very low down the lane around Alco's, you can uh, manipulate waves, you can do a lot of damage, you can help your ADC get a lot of early pressure, level to advantage, and just keep scaling into the late game. One of the hardest things with Heimerdinger is scaling into the late game because of just his kit. Like, I feel like Heimer doesn't scale that well. He's more of a, an early to mid game champion, late game, unless you have like a lot of flat AP, a lot of just base AP damage. You don't really do that well, where other champions could potentially build a little bit more kind of, not off meta, but not as pure AP, pure penetration. And I feel that Dark Harvest allows you to scale and dark harvest with the leandries as playing heimer support is insane i feel like it's it's not so again check out the videos if you haven't already on dark harvest heimer support they're fantastic uh they showcase uh, how the lanes played and uh how well it can work uh, in in certain scenarios and different matchups so dark harvest is great again dark harvest procs off of your turret auto attacks and uh obviously the leandries burn can spice it up a little bit too Taste of Blood, early sustain, really, really good in the lane. You can go Sudden Impact if you're playing super aggressive, but I feel like Taste of Blood is great because I just like I just like free sustain. That's one of the main reasons why I like Ravenous Hunter because it's, it's free regeneration. I don't have to spend money on pots. I don't have to get a Corrupting Potion. It's just free uh, heals. Eyeball Collection, again, works really, really well. Maybe if you're playing support, you can swap this out for Zombie Ward. It can work too. Uh, Ingenious Hunter works probably a lot better than ravenous hunter in relation to how the support lanes played but i still am a ravenous hunter fanboy prove me wrong and then the secondary tree because you're playing super aggressive scorch and absolute focus works tremendously well but because you're not having any kind of regeneration here which you would uh with the biscuits if you want inspiration it might be good to take a mana flow depending on how uh well you work with your mana management and mana manipulation bot lane so scorch absolute focus dark harvest all about the early damage all about trying to get as many dark harvest procs as possible you take it obviously ignite whenever you're playing uh, dark harvest support uh downside with playing dark harvest is that you can just scale very badly into the late game if you maybe don't get those stacks in which you need so if you're playing against a very long range lane maybe you're playing against like a lux kaelin or something like that it might be a lot harder to get uh dark harvest procs so maybe it wouldn't be the best bet uh in that scenario because obviously if you don't have dark harvest procs you probably don't do a lot of damage so it's as simple as that and then bot uh going down to your offense and flex and defense adaptive force adaptive force then defense changing to mr or armor in regards to who you're playing against and that essentially guys is all of our runes that's our rune setup so comment below let me know what you think do you think this is a bad approach to runes a good approach to runes or somewhere in between let me know what you prefer it's all about your play style it's all about your lane sometimes it's about your elo and it's about champions in which you just play against all the time i might be able to play a little bit different against certain champions because i play against them all the time i know how to play into them but maybe you guys won't play that well against certain champions uh or maybe i won't play as good against certain champions which you guys play against maybe i have a complete different approach but let me know i love hearing other people's thoughts especially if they are heimerdinger players as well so that is done for the runes and move on to the build so guys let's look at a top lane build the first item that i go every single game nearly every single lane apart from support obviously is dorans dorans is still the best starter item on heimer you can go tier you can go corrupt and potion but i do feel you get the most efficiency and the most utility out of an early dorans dorans is something which you'll have throughout nearly the entirety of the game until you're forced to sell it maybe you need an extra 50 100 g for your rabbitans then you're going to throw it in the bin and you're going to buy rabbitans but until then Dorans is a very, very nice item, especially from level 1, especially all the way up to level 6. It's great. 
So we go Dorans with some pots to begin with, and then we will slowly transition into getting either Boots and an Amplifying Tome on our first back, uh, with maybe a refillable potion, or if you are rolling in gold, you can get a chapter. You can get a chapter in your first back because obviously the extra sustain in the lane is going to keep you afloat no matter who you're against, but especially top lane, it's going to be great. So what does chapter turn into? It is going to turn into a Leandris. You go Leandris top lane due to the nature of the champions that you're going to be playing against. If you're playing against a tanky bruiser of any kind, then Leandris is going to pay off dividends compared to that of a Ludens. And more than likely, it's going to be really, really good against the jungler as well. And probably everybody if they have uh, any kind of melee orientation built into their kit. So if you're playing against a hefty melee team, then Leandris is the go-to. If you're playing top lane against maybe like, I don't know, for whatever reason, uh, another AP laner, then you can potentially go Ludens. But the majority of the time, Leandris is going to be the most efficient way to play because they're going to be melee. They're going to be having a pretty high base health pull. And it's just going to work tremendously well with your turrets. Your turrets proc Leandris, your missiles proc Leandris. It's just a Leandris party in the top lane. So once you have Leandris, you can then potentially go and get your sorcery bits. So then you're going to have sorcery bits, Leandris, and your Dorns, and refillable potion probably. And then you're going to transition to either a Zonya or a Rylai's. So whenever you're choosing Zonya or Rylai's, it's like, am I playing against a high burst assassin jungle in mid lane? Maybe it's a Kiana in the jungle, a Zed mid. And maybe you're playing against a fewer top lane, then Zonya might make more sense. If you're playing against maybe a Zac jungle and maybe an Orn top lane or uh, maybe a Maokai top lane or if somebody's just generally a lot tankier than high burst, then Rylai's could be the shout because you can just kite them and get the Leandris burned down and it could pay off dividends when it comes to the mid, uh, when it comes to team fights or when it comes to uh, any kind of early ganks. So we got Leandris, you got Rylai's. Also, Rylai's is a very, very cheap item now in Season 12. Uh, it may not have as much oomph in relation to AP, but it's very, very cheap, which in turn allows you to get a significant power spike. So Rylai's or Zonya, pick your poison, Whatever works best, hey, depending on what way the game is going, you can potentially get both. It really doesn't matter. But if you do go Rylai's and Zonya, remember, the next item that you're probably going to go is Shadow Flame or Void. The worst thing about Leandris is the fact that it has no penetration. The only penetration which comes into your kit is your boots. So you need to either get a Void or a Shadow Flame or even both because obviously, again, whenever you're playing top lane, you're going to be playing against more than likely a champion who's going to get Merc Treads and then stack a crap ton of MR. And if they stack a crap ton of MR, your burn damage is going to do nothing. You might as well be lighting a candle underneath their butts because that is what it's going to feel like to a full MR Orn. <laughs> so, or a Tam Genge. Tam Genge is back again, boys. So we counteract this by getting the Void. And maybe even a Shadow Flame. Shadow Flame is a nice kind of new item which has come in Season 12. And it's something which I'm starting to build quite a lot of. Uh, no matter what lane that I'm playing, uh, depending on matchup. You know, if I'm playing mid, support, APC or top. If they have a lot of shields, then Shadow Flame is a really, really good shout. Having the new Hextech Alternator uh, giving you some health makes it a lot more viable than uh, potentially before. So Hextech Alternator is great because it gives you health. Uh, so, and that works really, really well top lane. So Shadow Flame, Void, mixed with uh, a Leandris is a match made in heaven. But you, again, you got to have that survivability. So you got to choose between going Zonia or Rylai's. Pick your poison. And the last item or two is going to be a Cosmic Drive and a Rabadans. Cosmic Drive is a very, very underrated item, especially whenever you combo it with Leandris and Rylai's. You become an absolute kite monster top lane, and it's way better than potentially a lot of people are giving a credit for. Cosmic Drive, Rylai's Leandris, crazy good whenever you're playing against a hefty melee orientated comp. As well as that, your big final item is going to be none other than my favorite hat, the Rabadans Death Cap. Death Cap is a pivotal part of any late game AP oriented champion. If you do not build a Rabadans late game, then you're doing yourself a huge injustice. Especially if you're playing something like Gathering the Storm as part of your runes. Rabadans just adds that big giga oomph which you potentially need going into that 30, 40, 50 minute game. 
you'll find that once you get this, your power spike will be absolutely unbelievable. But it's something you don't prioritize till later in the game because, again, you are not the AP mid lane assassin. You're the big pushy top lane ding donger trying to get played and trying to take a lot of pressure away from other lanes from the jungle. And that is your role. But that being said, when it comes to team fights, your damage, especially with Leandries, especially with Void late game, can turn the tides. It can turn the tides of a Baron. Uh, it can turn the tides of potentially a, a massive fighter on bot side. Rabadans is fantastic. When I'm playing mid lane, I'll maybe get Rabadans as a third or fourth buy, but we'll talk about that when we're talking about mid lane. Right now, this is what your build is going to look like going into the late game. You're going to have your boots. You're going to have Leandris. You're going to have Rylai's. You're going to have Void. You're going to have Rabadans. And you're going to have Cosmic Drive. You can also swap out Cosmic Drive for a Shadow Flame. You can also swap out Rylai's for a Zonia. But this is potentially what my late game top lane build is going to look like. Again, guys, if you have any, uh, you know, changes of opinion or differences of opinion, comment. Let me know what your top lane build is like. I am down for trying as many different vari variations of a top lane build as possible. So this is what I think is good. Let me know what you think. And now let's look at my mid lane build path. Mid lane is my main lane uh, going into season 12. I do like to play support. I do like to play top, but realistically, they're both my secondary roles. Mid is the be all and end all for me. Why? I have the most fun playing mid lane. I feel like I have the most impact playing mid lane. And uh, I can help with a lot of different things. I can go bot, help them get ahead. I can roam top, help with... Herald, uh, I can get mid lane priority and help with Scuttle Crab. Uh, say uh, I already have priority, maybe my mid laner's dead, I can go and help with Drake. So there's a lot more things that I can have an impact on than that of potentially uh, top lane. But anyway, in regards to our build path, I like to start off with a Doran Shrink, just like we do top lane or bot lane. I feel like Doran's just the be all and end all of any kind of starter item for uh, an AP oriented champion. So we go from Doran's and what we're going to prioritize, just like we did top lane, is a chapter. Chapter is obviously what we're going to build into our mythic. And realistically, you have a couple of different options on what mythic you're going to build mid lane. The Andres is still a fantastic choice, completely match up and team comp dependent. Are you playing against a very melee oriented team comp with a lot of tankiness and base health pull, or that maybe they're going to build a lot of health, then realistically, Leandris is going to make more sense mathematically and just logically thinking it's going to be a lot better. You're going to have longer team fights, so therefore Leandris is going to be a better choice. But if I'm playing potentially a an electrocute playstyle or an electrocute uh, ignite aggressive mid lane playstyle, then I'm going to probably go Ludens. Why? Ludens burst is huge. Couple that with uh, your your combos. And potentially your electrocute and ignite fantastic and also for the pure fact that luden's mythic bonus is really really good leandry's obviously doesn't offer you any kind of penetration but luden's does and this is fantastic if you're playing against a comp which is maybe not going to build a lot of mr because that means you don't have to prioritize building any form of penetration apart from your sorcery bits i like going into maybe four or five items and having that baseline of extra penetration straight from luden's also, if I do build a Void Stuff, if I, if I do build a Shadow Flame, I'm getting that extra little bonus damage, which I wouldn't have otherwise because of the legendary Mythic bonus from Ludens. It's fantastic. I, I just love Ludens. A lot of people still don't give it enough, uh, enough respect that it deserves. Also, it's really, really good for Wave Clear, and I just feel it's a, it's a great item. It's really, really good. And also, you can proc things with Ludens. So your Ludens can uh, proc Scorch. It can proc Comet. It can proc uh, Rylai's if you really wanted to. Loons can proc a lot of different things. So that is usually what I will go for. Loons or Leandries, completely matchup dependent, completely playstyle dependent, and completely rune dependent. After my Loons, depending on how ahead I am, I actually go Rabadans, believe it or not. I'm potentially going to go Rabadans if I'm ahead. If I'm not ahead, I might go Zonia or I might go Shadow Flame. Remember, you do get that extra penetration bonus from Luden. So if you go Luden's in the Shadow Flame, your damage is still pretty hefty, especially if you're playing something like an Electric Kit. But again, it's completely dependent on who you're against and how much gold you have at certain points of the game. So Luden's in the Shadow Flame or Luden's in the Rabadons. You're playing a lot more aggressive mid than you would top lane. So getting utility for me isn't a priority until maybe your third item. 
So your utility for your third item is going to be a Zonya, because realistically, you're probably going to be playing against uh, an Assassin Jungle or an Assassin mid or a High Burst mid. It's Season 12, the meta is all about who can kill each other the fastest, so Zonya probably makes a lot more sense. Even if you feel like you need an early stopwatch, you can get that. Uh, when if you're potentially going to get your second item, you can maybe go Luden stopwatch, then get a Shadow Flame or Luden stopwatch, or into Rabadans, depending on what you're playing at. But you don't necessarily have to get your Zonya as your second item. But again, I have to keep saying this. I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot. It's completely dependent on the jungler, the mid lane, and the team comp. Okay. A lot of the times, so I'll prioritize maybe a Zonya second if I'm playing against a Kana or a Zix or a Rengar, maybe in the jungle with maybe a, an Echo LeBlanc, a Zed Talon mid. But if I'm playing against something like uh, another artillery mage mid lane with a Lee Sin in the jungle, then I maybe wouldn't prioritize a Zonya because it wouldn't be as efficient of a buy. So we're going to go Ludens into your Rabadans or Ludens into your Shadow Flame. And obviously, we're going to get our boots thrown in there as well, maybe on our second back. Uh, yeah, depending on uh, if we die or not, or uh, if we maybe have a little bit of a gold burst, obviously you prioritize your boots. But I don't necessarily complete my boots all the time until maybe I get my second item. Sorcery boots is obviously a really nice kind of extra oomph for the penetration. But sometimes I feel that getting Saloons into a Hex deck alternator into a Shadow Flame is way more of an efficient trade whenever you're maybe playing aggressive than going for your boots obviously your boots uh, help you dodge skill shots and help you get back to lane faster so it's personal preference really but you will get your boots you will have your sorcery boots thrown in there so you're going to have sorcery boots ludens shadow flame and a rabadans potentially all three depending on how the game is going but your fourth or third buy is going to be a Zonya because you can do all the damage in the world but if you're dead then you can't do damage dead people can't fight unless you're Sion. And your final item or two can realistically be a couple of different things. You can go Void Staff because Void Staff with Ludens, with Shadow Flame, with Rabadans is crazy damage. Really, really, really good. And obviously, depending on if you have more AP champions in your team, they might build uh, a, a good amount of MR. And realistically, you're just going to cut through them like butter. So Void can be a fantastic choice. Or also, you can go Horizon Focus. Horizon Focus is great. Uh, I feel that season 12 has made horizon focus and cosmic drive a lot more viable than they ever have been so horizon focus is a great item especially for the pure fact that the build path consists of a hex deck alternator so you can have a hex deck alternator essentially twice in the game before you build it into their actual full-blown legendary items obviously that's shadow fame and that's horizon focus so the extra burst which you get from building all these items and the power spikes that you get i feel will be much greater with the ludens than it potentially would with the leandries but this is if I'm playing against uh, very low base health uh, champions, very squishy mid laners, squishy junglers. But we do build the Leandries if we're playing against, you know, maybe the Shens, the Nunus, the Zaks, the Leonas. So say it's something like Shen, Nunu, uh, Leona, Thresh in, the, in that team, then we would probably go Leandries over Ludens. So your final build mid lane is going to be Boots, Ludens, Rabadans, Void shadow flame and more than likely a zonia because you got to have at least a little bit of survivability in there if you're going to be going full glass cannon so this is a pure uh, assassin ap assassin heimer 360 no scope one shot potential electrocute mid lane gameplay this is the build path that i'll go if i'm playing electrocute obviously like i said you can go leandries you can swap out ludens uh for leandries if needed and realistically, you can still kind of keep a similar build path by just swapping out Leandries. Like the, all the items which you build with Ludens still work very well with Leandries. The only difference is, is the way your damage is going to be spread out during team fights, and that's essentially it. And you can swap both of these uh, mythics around at will whenever you need to each game. But I need to say, in season twelve, a huge, huge honorable mention to Crown of the Shattered Queen. Crown of the Shatter Queen is something which is definitely, definitely viable on Heimer, but probably only in the mid lane. Crown is something that I buy if I'm playing against a very high burst team. So the way it works is I'll go Crown, and then I will probably build full aggression after I build Crown. If you go Crown into Zonia, into your Rylize and stuff, you're stacking too much defensive items. You're doing too much uh 
fo you're focusing too much on realistically surviving rather than doing damage. And that's the give and take in which you need to take into consideration whenever you build crown. So crown would be then followed by a shadow flame, followed by maybe a rabbitance, followed by a void, something like that. Crown's great on Heimerdinger because of the mythic bonus. Obviously, the fact that you get a little bit of a barrier as well, which gives you a lot of survivability against assassins. But the mythic bonus is great because of the movement speed you get. So you can go Rylize with it. You can go uh, Cosmic Drive with it maybe later on in the game, maybe as your fifth or sixth item. But Crown is something which I only buy if I'm playing against like a full burst uh, team. So I'm playing against maybe an Echo Jungle, a Zed mid, uh, an Aurelia top. And then maybe something like a Jinx and a and a Lux bot lane. You know what I mean? Where I'm going to die in a matter of like two seconds in a team fight if I don't have any kind of survivability. So Crown's great, but not something you should build every single game. I now move on to our bot lane build path. And just like our mid lane runes, our bot lane build is exactly the same. So the way it works is that we want to prioritize getting the Ludens and Sorcery Boots. You want to try and poke them down as much as possible. Remember, you're playing APC. You're playing against a lot of long-range AD carries like Caitlyn. So you want to try and match range with range. And obviously, going Ludens in this matchup probably makes the most sense. You can go Leandres, but realistically, your ethos and the point of you playing APC is to mimic the exact same damage and the impact that an ADC would have, but just you're playing AP in that role. So whenever you're playing APC, you usually want to try and have an AD jungle or an AD mid. To make sure that what doesn't happen is that they can build a lot of MR and counter many lanes. And then completely lock down any kind of late game skill in which you have. Just like mid lane, you want to go Ludens. Instead of going Rabbit on second, you're probably going to go Zonya or Shadow Flame. Zonya for the survivability against a lot of ganks or a lot of pressure ball lane. And then obviously Shadow Flame works tremendously well against a lot of champions who can shield. And obviously if you're playing ball lane... You're probably more inclined to play against a champion that can shield more than mid lane. So you're going to be playing against potentially the Lulus, the Karmas, the Luxes, and so on. And Shadow Flame helps kind of get ahead and, and do a lot more damage than potentially you would otherwise. So you're going to go Sorcery Boots. You're going to go Ludens. You're going to go Zonya or Shadow Flame into a Void, into a Rabadans. And then that's kind of it. So you're going to probably end up with the exact same build path as you would with the mid lane build but just maybe use some items before others. And it's as simple as that. I now move on to the final lane or the final rule, and that is support. And no, I'm not gonna be doing a build or rune guide for Heimerdinger Jungle, unless maybe this video gets a crazy amount of likes or comment below if you maybe want the Jungle Heimerdinger gameplay with a guide or something, I don't know. Let the people speak. If you want it, let me know. But as for now, we're gonna focus on the support role. And the support role is very, very simple. So whenever you're playing Heimerdinger support, there's a few different ways that you can approach the build path, just like there's a few different ways you can approach the rune page. So like I said earlier, you can play them with Dark Harvest Rune or Strike Rune, or if those don't potentially fit your play style, you can adopt Comet Azure Rune. But essentially, they are all probably going to have the same build path within reason. So you start off with Spell Thief as your main support item obviously you're an ap support so that's what you're going to go for all about the damage all about the early poke all about that free gold simple and then you're going to transition to getting your mythic your mythic is going to be a leandris leandris with dark harvest with comet and even with first strike with first strike you can potentially swap it out for ludens i feel that leandris just makes the most sense due to the play style of a support and the play style of Heimer. Not to mention Leandris is great with Dark Harvest whenever you're trying to proc it and whenever you do get Leandris, if Leon phase is still, you know, happening and you're still there with your ADC, you're not roaming so much and you're potentially getting ganked and it's a 3v2 scenario, Leandris is amazing. Leandris is so, so good for baits. It's very, very good for uh, 2v3s, 2v4s. Uh, it pretty much guarantees that somebody will die in that fight if you play it correctly with your ultimate. And you're probably thinking to yourself, oh, but Rezone, this season, Glacial's pretty good and Everfrost is good. And yeah, it is. And if you can make it work, you use it. This is primarily what I think uh, works best and what I feel works for me. I have tried so many games with Everfrost and some go really, really well and others go really, really badly. I feel that going into the late game, 
you have to rely on your ADC getting ahead in order for Everfrost to work correctly. I can, you know, use Everfrost, I can use Glacial and get them enough peel, but realistically, they might be a little bit behind and then I lack damage, they lack damage, and it's just a bit of a fiesta. Or if I go Leandries with Dark Harvest or Leandries with First Strike, I feel like I'm doing enough damage to validate me going into the mid to late as a support. You know, I'm not going to be doing as much damage as the mid lane. I hope not, because obviously I'm a support. But... Leander using Dark Harvest helps keep me afloat going into the mid game, going into the late game, and then First Strike obviously helps me have that early pressure and uh, early gold to help me get uh, the, the advantage. So after Leandries, I like to prioritize a Rylais, especially with Rylais being so cheap now. You know, Rylais is purely built as a utility item, not for a damage item. So the fact that as a support, you can get the slow sooner than later is fantastic. It's different if you're playing in top lane or mid lane because you want to have as much AP as possible, but having that utility uh, on the slow is just fantastic, especially whenever you're potentially trying to uh, roam or have any kind of early invades or early fights. Uh, that's where Rylai starts popping off. Rylai gives you enough peel with enough damage to validate you being a support. So going on to your fourth item. So you have Spell Thief as your first item. You have your Leandries as your second. You have your Rylai as your third. And your fourth is probably going to be Azania. Your fourth is probably going to be Azania. I know I always say about don't stack too much utility or too much defensiveness, but you're a support. And that's kind of what you're about. You want to burn, you want to kite, you want to peel. And I feel that Zonia is usually a smart play. It usually is a really smart play. So after Zonia, you probably will prioritize... It depends how long the game goes on. Very rarely I'll get full build as a support. It usually ends at like four or five items. But yeah, after your Zonia you will more than likely end with a Rabadance, to be honest, or a Shadow Flame. Just like whenever you're playing the APC role, you're going to be playing against shield-orientated champions like the Lulus, like the Karmas, like the Luxes, and then Shadow Flame just helps add insult to injury and uh, hopefully, a lot of, uh, hopefully a lot more injury uh, than insult. But yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think in the comment section, guys. Does this build work? Does all, all of my builds work? Do you think there's any kind of spanners in the works? Hashtag Heimerdinger joke. Is there anything you would potentially change? Is there anything you would potentially do differently for any of the runes, any of the rules? Let me know because I can learn just as much as you. Remember, I say this all the time on stream. Remember, guys, follow me on stream, twitch.tv forward slash Rezone Games. I might as well chill it uh, while I'm on a rant. But most definitely, let me know. League of Legends, like I said earlier, is not a linear game there's so many champions every game's different so you should approach every build and every play style and every lane every room page in a different way okay use this as a template grasp it but don't use it as a bible okay this is not the heimer bible this is the story of cecil b heimerdinger and his versatile play style on summoner's rift so like the video, subscribe if you guys are new here. I know I did say at the beginning that I was potentially going to do some secret tips at the end, but this is like a one hour video. I think I feel like I've bored you enough. I went in so much detail and also that gives me enough info and uh, gumption for a separate video. So take it easy, peace out and good luck on the rift.